In this video, build on top of the excellent heart rate services by Pulsoid and Hybrate. Get full control of your current, minimum, maximum, and average heart rates. Trigger events when you have new minimum or new maximum heart rate values. Trigger on specific heart rate values, or when the average hits particular bands of values as well. Hello, and welcome to Stream Robot Bytes where I cover how to set up and to make the most of the awesome streamer bot. There is one video per topic to make it easy as possible to follow and find. When relevant, sample import code will be provided to make it even easier for you to get started and to add functionality to your stream. So let's get started with the topic for this video. The first thing to do is to pick an application to record your heart rate. Streamer bot supports both Pulsoid and Hype Rate. If you're looking at choosing between them, I suggest looking at the device support, so the heart rate sensor itself, the aesthetics of the widget, and the other integrations are available. There are some paid features like additional aesthetics or graph support, but you don't need to pay anything to get the stream of up integration. I will be using today the free version of Pulsoid to go through my examples. To set up the advanced heart rate features in OBS, I would suggest use a separate scene to be able to contain all the data that we're putting in. So I've created a scene here called health. I'm going to create sources within that. And we're going to create GDI sources. So the current heart rate will be the first one. Let's call it current. This will change whenever the data comes through. We're going to create an average. Again, we're going to have the text in place just to lay things out for now. Third one is going to be maximum. And finally, we'll add in one for minimum. We'll show you later how to actually have any prefixes. So you can either have just the numbers, have text and numbers in here. Of course, you can modify the text and um, textile, font, things like that. Now, if you want to add these into a scene, you go to the scene in question, and you can add in the scene of health. That's going to show up as a full screen at this point. You probably don't want it to take up so much space, but you can move the size using the Alt key, hold down the ALT key. You can reduce it down. We'll probably need to be less, but for now we'll keep it to this size. And you can see, you can put that on your scenes wherever you want and the layout will be consistent now, obviously I've not done a great job laying out there but we can fix that later on the next thing to do is you want to add some filters in to the source itself so whenever the heart rate averages change over a particular value we want to change color so for that we're going to add in some filters I'm going to add in three color correction filters. I'm going to start off with red. So this is then with the color multiply on a red. It's going to turn the text red. We can then do another one, color correction to be orange. Again, picking an orange color. Which one would look better? Let's give it this one. And finally, a color correction called yellow. And we're going to pick a yellow here. So by picking the relevant effect filters, we can have text showing is red, orange, or yellow. If you want to, you could expand this by different colors. Um, a different default color as well 
and apply the pet effect filter as a default color onto the white um, onto the white to get the right effects. There's so many things you can do. This is more a shown example of how you can actually apply the heart rate triggers in a, in a very visual way. To import the actions into the streamer bot, go to the link in the video description below to get the import code. Within the web page, triple click, so it selects everything, and copy. Then in streamer bot, go to the import button at the top, paste in the string, and you can see here 23 actions are put in place and a queue to go along with it. We'll need to go through and update a bunch of these actions, but it shouldn't take so long. For the average heart rate action. So if you're using hype rate, you only need to update the hype rate actions. You could remove them if you don't use those. For pulsoid, you just need to go through pulsoid actions. So I'm gonna go through the pulsoid ones. The first thing you need to decide is if you want a prefix to the average heart rate, so AVG in this case here. If you don't, go into the argument and remove it or change to your preferred. The only other thing you need to do by default is to ensure that the current scene, which is health and source average HR, match up with the health and average HR you have in place there. Because we're using the default scene name and source name, we don't need to make changes here. If you want to have different triggers for the average heart rate, this is where you change that underneath the section below. So in the average heart rate, if we do 140 beats a minute or greater, we will have a red effect. If it's greater than 120, less than 140 still, it'll be orange. And if it's over 100, then it'll be yellow. So you can change those levels by modifying the value here. So double clicking or right click and edit sub action, change the value and okay. The set initial time, you don't need to touch that one or the average HR reset. These are functions that'll be used without any changes required. The main action, again, the prefix for the current heart rate. If you want to eradicate it completely, once you've made sure you've linked up the scene and source the correct one, you can change the prefix in there as well. If you want something afterwards, you can type it in here as well. So this is the same for all the actions that have a data point in OBS that's changed with the heart rate events. You can see here this triggers the maximum heart rate, minimum heart rate, and average heart rate actions. If you don't want to use those values, you can remove those, but I don't really think it's gonna be a problem to have any more. At the bottom point here, there is where you want current heart rate triggers. So if you want to see if it exceeds a particular amount of maximum heart rate. So like the average had um, over 140, 120, 100, you could actually do those in this place here instead. But what we're doing here is we're just saying if it equals 69, we'll do a trigger heart rate of 69. Please note, this will trigger the action every single time the heart rate is 69. So every single second that we get a reading, we're gonna trigger this action. So this really is just for an example only, and you probably want to delete it, or at least right click and then uncheck the enable. So this is where you'd put those for current heart rate triggering. I'm comparing the value of heart rate using the if statement there. The maximum heart rate action, Again, we have a prefix to change there and the OBS to make sure it matches the scene and source. You have reset ones. The reset actions we will create commands for shortly. Minimum heart rate, again, prefix, 
Again, make sure the scene and source are set there correctly. The trigger is now what you need to go through. So at this point, 69 trigger, you can see there's a Twitch message. The color effects. So if you want to apply no color effect, we want to make sure that the scene, again, and source match what we've set up. Again, using our default names like we have done makes it a lot easier to implement. Now, for no color effect, all of those filters are hidden. If you want orange, again, they match because it's the default. We'll just show the orange filter. Red only shows the red filter. Yellow shows the yellow filter. So you can make your own versions of these. But this is, again, just showing you an example of this. What we also have, and we'll go back to the uh, minimum and maximum heart rate functions in just a moment, is the trigger actions that are called from there. And these just set a Twitch message for a new low heart rate or new maximum heart rate. So they send a message to chat. But this could be a sound effect, it could be something visual in your stream. This means that you can really expand on it and make it very unique to your stream. So any other points about these is the delay between triggers. So this means that the new maximum heart rate action at the bottom of this trigger only happens once every, in this case default, 20 seconds. If you want that to be less or more, change the value here. If you want, for example, only every minute you want to do an action that your maximum heart rate is gone up, that's where you define this. Or if every 10 seconds is fine for you, that's, that's your choice. Again, with the minimum, the delay between trigger, it could be a different value. The argument is contained within that minimum heart rate action itself, and not linked to the other ones. So you can have different values depending on what works for you. What we might want to do is have an action to reset the maximum, minimum, and average heart rate. You're likely to want to do this before the start of the stream, or maybe between different sections. So you can do this as separate actions. What I'm going to do here is to show you if you want to reset heart rate details. Reset heart rate details. So this is going to make sure the average starts from the point of the reset. Minimum maximum will be changed from that point onwards as well. This doesn't need a queue. Um, so we can just leave it as a default option there. And what we can do is we're going to do the actions and run action. And since we're using Pulsoid, we're just going to call each of those to the average heart rate. I'm going to duplicate that because it's slightly quicker to pick again. And max. And min. Now we have an action which we can call by a single command to reset heart rate details. Same commands. We're going to use reset HR. And we're going to put it into a group and called heart rate commands. Point it at the, the reset heart rate details and make sure it's moderators only. And there we go. You've got that all set up and ready to go. Connecting to the heart rate services is done through the integrations tab in StreamRobot. You need to go to Hyperate or Pulsoid, and then you can connect to the account, which will prompt you in Pulsoids to log on to connect the two accounts and to allow StreamRobot to get the Pulsoid data. 
Then for the heart rate events, select the main HR action. You do that there. If you want to do hype rate, you put in your ID there. I would suggest auto connect from auto reconnect and connect to hype rate. And the heart rate event for hype rate, unsurprisingly, is hype rate main HR action. So whenever Pulsoid is now connected and running, so that will require you to have the application running on your phone and the heart rate sensor connected, then it's going to be triggering the main HR action. If you are troubleshooting this, please note that all the actions are set to EX. That means exclude from history. So you won't show them up in the action queue's history. This is because there's typically an event every second and you're calling multiple actions. So you'd have four actions every second and it would likely be difficult to spot anything else in the action history. So if you do need to troubleshoot, you do need to make sure that you have the exclusion history disabled for the action you're looking into. And now we're ready to test. So we can see where the current average maximum and minimum values are going to be. And as soon as the data starts coming through from Pulsoid or Hype Rate, they're going to start updating there. So it's going to give it a moment now I've started it. And we can see there, average might take a moment for the first couple of readings to actually get a uh, correct value. We can see now it's doing that. So we can see it's taking in the prefix if we have them set or not. The average, maximum and minimum values. So it's going to be difficult to reliably trigger the events that you want to do. So I'm going to show you a, a tip on how to give a specific heart rate value. So you can see a new maximum heart rate triggered a new message there. Go to StreamerBot and then in the actions, the main action for the relevant provider, Pulsoid in this case, go into the execute code. Now in the video description below, there's uh, just underneath the import code, a line you can put in here to define the heart rate. Doesn't matter if it's formatted or not, but you can do that. Putting the value in here will define the current heart rate. It'll override the sensor from Pulsoid or hype rate. So I'm going to set this up here as a large value. That means the average is going to go up pretty quickly. So we can test this. So we can see average is climbing very quickly. The maximum is to 250. Over 100. We're hitting that 100 to 120 band where we want to be yellow. Soon we're going to hit the orange. And if we keep going, we'll hit the red at over 140. Of course, not a realistic value here, but you get the idea of setting a particular value to trigger a particular event. Please like and subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. If there's a topic you'd like covered, please do let me know in the comments or on Discord. Check out my Twitch stream to see the bot in action and for other examples. The links to my Twitch, social media and to streamer bots can be found at vrflad.com. Additional links to others that provide streamer bot content can be also found in the description. Finally, thank you Nate for making a great bot and please consider supporting his Patreon which is linked from streamer.bot.